welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Oh, what a program we have today. That is the truth. We've got all young people on today. <laughs> I mean, really young. <laughs> Marilyn Hickey is with us. Yes, and I'm so excited. She is a remarkable person. And if you want to be healed in your soul, in your body, however you want healing, Marilyn is the one to pray for you. So yes, we're going to ask her before the program's over. We want your faith to be released. We want you to receive your healing today. Yes. And then we have the young man Dave Boyer with us today. Oh, and he's going to start the program singing... He's there waiting. Dave? I start another day Just playing out my role I'm doing what I have to Don't have much of a goal but the road's getting steeper And still I've got to try I'm in a little deeper With every little lie Every lie It's so complicated It's useless in a way but what else can I do now But start another day And while I'm just existing I'm hurting and hating Little do I realize That he there waiting He's waiting Holding sun and moon and stars up there in space He's changing those seasons at the proper time and place Watching Patiently the circles that I run Waiting now to give new life through Christ his Son All at once somehow I know I gotta see If this love of Christ will really work for me so so I'm not waiting my choice today I'm stating that from this day on I'm gonna make my way on the high road of Christ Oh, we appreciate that good music. Yes. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. It's so yes, good we do. to have you. I appreciate being here. Oh, God it's bless you. Oh, what a legacy. <laughs> we think about Reinhardt Bunke, but there are many that are going to have a great legacy, and you are one of them. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's an honor to have you. Now, you've ministered in a hundred 
in 37 countries? I haven't ministered in that many. But I have been, been in, in that many. Yeah. Yes. Well, you've ministered in a lot of them. <laughs> That's for <laughs> right. sure. 137 countries. I didn't know there was that many countries <laughs> in the world. But it's so good to have you. And I wanted to start off by talking about an experience that you had. Uh, in Buffalo, New York, many years yeah. ago, uh, you know, I was just talking to someone and they told me this story of you. I wasn't there, but you yeah. were. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he said that you started to get up and you fell out in the spirit. And you rolled down <laughs> right. three steps off the platform right. and rolled under a pew right. and stayed there laughing hilariously <laughs> until the whole place that was completely packed out started laughing in the spirit. And it wasn't just laughing because you were laughing. But the Spirit of God ah. came and gave them all joy, which we all need. Yes, and it was a special visitation. I, I really honor those visitations. I don't think we can make them up. It, it's just a God thing, and that was a God thing. Yes, and uh, it was part of a great revival. Right. That happened in Buffalo. Right, yeah. right. And I remember seeing you uh, many years ago in Lakeland, Florida. Yeah. At the great Carpenter's Home Church. When they had a great move of the Spirit. Right. And you and I were both in those meetings. <laughs> right. <laughs> On the floor. Yeah. <laughs> On the floor. I was too. And uh, uh, Rodney Howard Brown was yes. the pastor there. Right. And uh, I know he is, he thinks the world revolves around you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you and your daughter, right. Sarah, uh, you all were ministered to in a great way with Dr. Rodney Howard yeah. Brown. Hmm. Well, well, and I think those are special times, appointed times. Yes. You can't make those things happen. No. That's, That's right. just a special visitation of the Holy Spirit. That's right. But I want to just share something, too. I think with the passing of Reinhard Bonnke and the influence that he has had, you know, that I think it encourages people to grab the mantle and... Yeah. I think it's totally scriptural because who wants to be buried with their mantle? Yes. You know, they threw a dead man in on Elisha's bones and the dead man was raised up. I don't want people <laughs> to be thrown in on my bones or ashes. <laughs> I want to leave the anointing now. And yes. you do too. Yes. Yes. That's your heart. That's Absolutely. your passion. Amen. Well, uh, Denver is your home. Yes. And uh, we're, we're thankful to you. A lot of people don't know this, but you donated furniture and other things, lights and yeah. things to our studio there. Right. Our oh. privilege. And thank oh, you. Thank our you. pleasure. I, well, I know it was hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. worth of equipment and things. More like and, thousands and thousands. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you make it possible uh, for what they're doing there. Well, that's an honor. Well. Thank you. That's an honor. You're an honor to us. Well, we was reading your book. You started off as a little girl, and naturally. Uh, <laughs> But I never knew that you were molested as a little girl. At, when I was 11, yeah. Yeah, I was. That's a terrible thing. 
And how did you get through that? Well, actually, God so visited me because it was in a family situation. Uh, it was during the Second World War, and we had to live with my aunt and uncle. And I had an uncle who molested me. I was 11 years old. I didn't understand. I didn't like it, but I didn't understand. And it was very depressing to me because I thought there was something wrong with me, you know. And so I carried that until I got hold of the Word. And the Word makes you a new creation in yeah. every arena of your life, every arena of your life. So, right. And it helps me to have compassion and understanding for people who go through those things because God brought me through. Yeah. Now, see, I would have been in sixth grade, but in seventh grade, I just kind of popped out of it. I was real depressed. I thought I was the problem. You know, I didn't think of my uncle being the problem. But I got into the Word, and God began to change my life. So we don't have to live under that cloud. And I share some of that in the book. The game is not over till you win. Yeah. Because here I am. I'm 88 and a half, and I'm doing more in my 80s than in my 30s. My That's goodness. amazing. <laughs> God is amazing. So is His Word. Uh, well, you did an awful lot back 60 years ago Yeah. when you met Wally. Yes. And yes. Uh, you and him were a great team together. Right, right. And he, he was very encouraging with me. You know, when I wanted to preach or teach, he was, he, he helped me. And he never said, oh, you know, you're going to be a failure. Because I think a lot of times when we start, we have negative words. Hmm. You know, I remember an evangelist that, that we Welsh really... That Welsh revival, the Welsh minister. Yes. I want you to share that. <clears throat> because he actually said that to you. Uh, we had an evangelist who came to our church and said of all the women, pastor's wives I know, you're the biggest example of a failure. You know, and those are very encouraging things. <laughs> and so I think it's not over till you win. If you'll take the word into your circumstance, you will win. And I remember the first time I went, I wanted to be on television on Sunday mornings for 30 minutes. And I had to meet with the board and they said, you're not television material. You would never pay your bill. And one man, one man, not a Christian man, said, I think she'll pay her bill. Let's try her. Now, that's over 45 years ago. They're not on television. I still am. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. That's why I like people to get the book. And radio, too. With radio, too. Oh, with Because radio. Wally said, no, you know, I can't support you in this. And it was only like just 30 minutes once a week or 15 minutes once a right. week. Right. But even $60 was a lot of money back then. It was. And he said, you know, you got to pray and come up with the money. But you'd been doing all these Bible studies in different little towns around. And these people believed in you because they had been listening to you. And they knew the anointing was on you. They kept wanting to come back. And they wanted other people to hear what you had to say. And by the way, I'm one of those that listened to her when I was a young mother <laughs> with a little baby just a few months old. And I could not wait to turn... Marilyn Hickey owned. I didn't know anything about you. I didn't know what you looked like, but I loved what I heard her say. I didn't understand the anointing. I was a baby Christian, but I was so hungry and thirsty to get the word in anywhere. And when she came on, I, I tried to picture you all the time because I heard joy in your voice. I yes. heard confidence and um, I heard love, but I loved your message. And so I couldn't wait for it to come on. So, so I want to tell so you a funny story, Jane. What? So I would do those in my basement in a closet. And I'd have to wait till my family went to bed because if they flushed a commode, <laughs> it came on. <laughs> and so I had to wait till everybody went to bed, 1130 or midnight. Then I would do those. And one time there was a cricket. <laughs> and I thought, oh dear, I have to do it over. And so I'm doing it over and the cricket chirped again. And finally, I just thought, forget it, keep the chirp. And do you know, a woman so in a mental hospital 
wrote me and she said, I hadn't heard a cricket for years and it was so nice to hear a cricket on your program. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, just what I want to do is encourage people to step out in faith. Yeah. yeah. And if God is telling you to do it, God is for you. Who can be against you? So in that timing, you know, women didn't do those things at all. And I said that to God, you know, I'm a woman. He said, I'm well aware of that, <laughs> you know. And he said, being a woman will never be your problem. It will be my problem. Your problem will be your faith. Wow. And so I share that in the book. Yeah. It's your faith, not your gender. Mm. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Well, and your faith true. is all throughout that book. But, you know, this is something that amazed me because I thought because she had a hunger for the Word of God, because you said to God when you were younger, I want to know you. And it's like he spoke to you about, know my word. Is that what he said? Know well, my word. how he began to deal with me. We lived in a little town in Pennsylvania. That was during the Second World War. And, uh, I, the, you know, there were five or six churches and God was drawing me. And I said, Lord, I want to be where you are. Are you in the Catholic Church? Are you in the Baptist Church? Are you in the Methodist Church? Where are you? And this is what he said, Jane. <laughs> this is Pastor. He said, I am in the Word. In the Word. And I began to really soak into the Word. Mm -hmm. See, I thought you were born again at that point, but you weren't. No. I read later. No. You didn't get born again until years later. I was 16. So that amazed me because he gave both Bob and I a like a supernatural insatiable appetite for the Word of God but that was after I received him into my heart as Lord and Savior. So I was amazed at that. Yeah I didn't get born again till later but I said I got the author in my heart. <laughs> you know? Yes. But he was drawing me and so yeah. And I, I just think this is so important to people watching this program today. You've got to feed your faith. You can't just feed on the faith of others. You have to read the Bible for yourself. Right. That's key. You know, so yeah. you say, well, I'll turn on a tape. Yeah, okay, I like tapes too. But I have to read the Word for myself every day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, we do too. Abs right. Every day. Every day. Every day. And pray every day. And this is my Bible that I preach out of, but this Bible's terrible. I mean, it's marked in. It has tears in it. You know, it has question marks because, you know, you don't understand everything. And so I read through the Bible usually twice a year. And so I mark it up. I put question marks. Sometimes I take them away because the next year I get the answer. <laughs> wow. Get hooked on the book. Yes. yes. Get Amen. hooked on Change the book. Change your life. Amen. Well, you always had this desire to uh, go to nations, didn't you? You always loved other nationalities. And even in the 50s when other people were so prejudiced, you weren't at all. Do you think God just put that in you, a desire for you love to hear about other nations and and their cultures, and in fact, was it Corrine that was your good friend at school, high school? Yeah. And you loved her, and y'all yeah. were good friends, and God just put that in you, you said, you thought, early. at a very early age. Very early. And always, it's a process. It's never a leap from here to there. It's always a process. So we lived in Pennsylvania, and they had, you know, people from Italy and different things. So I got involved with them. And then I got a desire to study languages. So I took French. I took Latin. Later I would take Spanish and Hebrew and Greek some. And so those languages were a part of the process. So then I met Frida Lindsay. And she prayed for every nation in the world every day. Wow. And really? she was a tough mentor. So she said, you need to do it too. And I said, how do you do that? She said, I memorize them by continent. So I memorized for one year every nation by continent and prayed over them every day. Again, I can't, I can't honor process enough. And then God began 
to put in my heart a desire to reach Islamic people. Mm. So all this is process. We don't want to jump from here to there. It's not like that. I'm still in process. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting open doors to some of these Muslim countries. And because I'm an old woman, old woman, they think I'm harmless. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> we that's because that's you wield the sword of the spirit. Exactly. Well, you know it, what? The Bible says you, Jesus uh, said that man will have what he says. And you have said for years, I love the Muslim people. Right. And the Muslim people love me. And they do. And God has just opened super. Unusual doors. Listen, in the green room, she showed us pictures. And one picture was a million people out there. It's just a sea of people. This is a door that only God could open in favor that only God can give. It's, that was in Pakistan where we had a million people. But I started with a smaller meeting. You know, I went and advertised healing. They didn't even know what that was. And for a woman, you know, and I had my head covered. I, and they dressed beautifully. But I went and I had like... Uh, 2,000 people or maybe 4,000 people. It was four nights. The first night, because everybody said, when you stand up, everybody will leave. They hate women. <laughs> and when I stood up, they didn't leave. And by the fourth night, we had 20,000 people. Wow. And I saw wow. a hunger in these people. And I saw it's not gender, it's the word. It's yeah. the word, yeah. And if you look at your gender, you get confused. Well, that reminds me of a story in your book. God opens all kinds of doors. He has all kinds of doors for this lady. <laughs> but one that the Holy Spirit, I feel like, just brought back to my memory was when you were invited to go to the Mormon church. And this was years ago. Yeah. And it's like, Wally, do I go? It's like, it's an open door, go. And that last night, and they listened to what you had to say. Right. Uh, but they really, they really weren't that friendly in the beginning. No. But the last night, you said, Wally, what should I do? And he said, share the gospel, give an invitation to an receive Jesus. God. So would you just share a little bit about that? <laughs> well, I was shocked that I got invited to a Mormon women's conference. And I don't know how, really. They heard me on the radio, and somebody was saved, evidently, and got me there. But then when I got there, they were very cool to me. I mean, there were like 200 women. And when I sat down at the table where they ate, they, didn't, they wouldn't sit by me. And so I called my husband and I said, what shall I do? And he said, well, I'm just praying you're going to have favor. Just stay in there tight. So I thought, I told him, I don't know the Book of Mormon. I don't know the Pearl of Great Price, but I know the Bible. So I want to share the Bible with you. And the last service I had, I gave an altar call for salvation and every woman received it. Really? Praise God. That was awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. But I think just being simple in your faith, you know, and, and if you look at who you're not yeah. <laughs> instead of who he is. Yeah. So th these doors come by looking to him. Yes. You know, and God loves people. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and he loves you, too. God does love you. We're going to take a break, and Dave's going to come back and sing, and then we're going to be talking more to Marilyn about her book and her 88, almost 89 years of travel through this earth and the things she could accomplish. We'll be right back. I'm going to tell you where my hope is. My hope is not in an organization. My hope is not in a plan. My hope is not in a treaty. My hope is in a man, a person that sits at the right hand of God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and my hope is centered totally, completely in Him. Beautiful. Someday we will. Exactly. Yes. And we like what's going on now. Yes, <laughs> we do. Uh, <clears throat> the book, It's Not Over Until You Win. Right. <laughs> what was the meaning for that? Well, 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Thanks be unto God who always leads us to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. That's so good. that has been a theme in my life because I've had lots of no's. And so I've stood on that. You know, it's not over until you win. And sometimes it takes a little while. You know, you believe for your children to be saved, grandchildren. Now I'm seeing on my son, you know, we have an adopted son. I'm seeing his family get born again. 
Right. And wow. recently I went back to see them. They were in Ohio and I'm crying on the plane. I'm so happy because they're turned on to God and they're doing well. Wow. And the Lord said to me, why are you crying? You prayed for them every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I like people to get the book because we're not losers. Amen. We're winners. And you've got to see yourself as that, especially when you go through time things. Yeah. You know, you think, oh, I've been praying all these years. It didn't happen. And I think it helps you with healing, too. You know, yeah. and I'm 88 and a half. You know, they say you should retire. I say, I am retired. What do you mean? You travel all the time. I said, retiring is doing what you like. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm doing what I like. So I don't want people to give up. I want them to hang in, and I want them to see they are winners. Hey, Can I see man. that book? I want to say something about it, too. <laughs> this book, you know, we're just touching on many of the miracles in here. We've got miracles to talk about. But this is her autobiography right. of her life. You know, Bob and I love to read these kind of books. I love to read how people start out. You know, the Bible says, despise not small beginnings. But it's just like you've seen the perseverance. You got that from your mother, didn't you? I did. Your mother really persevered. It's she just did. ingrained she in did. you. But it's like um, one miracle after another miracle, but it's standing in faith. This woman is a pioneer for women in the ministry because you were turned down, like you said. It's in the book so many times, but that didn't stop her. Not one bit. <laughs> you just persevered. I love that. So this is one of the best books, one of the best autobiographies. I'm really not just saying that. I've read several, but this builds your faith up. I read so many stories in here. I read scriptures. I thought, <laughs> I forgot about that scripture. I used to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that again. It will just build your faith up. I can't say enough for it. So, Amen. <laughs> it's a bestseller. <laughs> I don't know where it's a bestseller, but I know it's a bestseller. <laughs> this is what I tell people. You give people candy, you make them fat. You give them flowers, they wilt. Give them a book that will change their life. Yeah. Yes. You know, and Amen. this will change people's lives. I know because I'm already hearing. <laughs> it will. And I know how the word works in my life, my daughter's life, my grandchildren's lives, great grandchildren now yeah. coming up. Yeah. Can I ask her to share about this? This is real. I had heard this before, but I'd like for you to share with our, our viewers. The time you became ill for nine months because you picked up a parasite. Yeah. And, you know, there are people going through things right now. Depression, they think right. it'll be like this forever. Would you just share your feelings? Because we're all human. And, right. You know, because everybody doesn't stay on the mountain all the time but you still put one foot in front of the other like you did exactly. and persevere and get people in to pray that know God. So would you just share what happened? Because nine months of this. Well, I got parasites, but I, they didn't know what was wrong with me. Later we found out, but I was just losing weight. I was losing energy and I was depressed, really depressed. And the doctors couldn't find out what it was but Frances Hunter was my friend. <laughs> you know, she, she's crazy faith. Yes. <laughs> so I would call her at night and she would say, well, how was your day? Well, it wasn't very good. Well, that's the last bad day you're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> you need crazy faith friends. So she really stood with me in that time and they found out that I had parasites and was losing weight because of it. But I think you need faith friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you need a church that teaches faith. Because all of us have trials. You know, having an uncle who abused me, I could have lived under that. There's something wrong with me. Yeah. But see, I got into the Word and that changed me. I got into faith teaching and I began to think everything was <laughs> possible with God. And people who said, you know, you're not a good pastor's wife. You don't lead the worship. You don't play an instrument. All you do is those silly little home Bible studies. But that was what God opened for me to win people. Because I said, God, I want to win the lost. We don't have lost coming to our church. 
Where are the lost? He said, they're not going to come to you. You're going to go to them. And mm. that's when I started home Bible studies. I had seven women <laughs> and over a cup of coffee, a cookie, and a Bible. These women began to get saved. Then they said, you know, why don't we have something for our husbands? And pretty soon I had 12 Bible studies, night and day. Then they said, why don't you go on the radio? And I really want to say this to you. Everything God does is process. I mean, I like miracles. Just drop out of the sky. Here they are. But really, it starts with just doing some of these things that are just process. So I had a man who said to me, oh, I had a vision. I had 100,000 in a meeting overseas. What do you think? What do you think? I said, I think you need to go across the street and win your neighbor. <laughs> process. Don't you yes, agree? I oh, and I nice. think this book helps you with processing these things. You don't start with 100,000 people. Yeah. You start with a neighbor or somebody in a restaurant or on the plane, they can't get out. <laughs> right. And a teachable heart. And that's where you shared about the man that was, they paid him to come and teach them how to talk to people. And anyway, he came to you and said, if you're willing to listen to what I have to say yeah. and not think you know it all. And then he just gave you some pointers that he did. you didn't say, look, I've been teaching the Word of God all this time and who are you to come in? <laughs> but you were very humble and you were teachable. And I think that God likes that. And I think if you hang around faith people and we can read their books, we can listen to them. Yes. But see, also, I was on Oral Roberts' board. Do you think that hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> and that was faith. I was also on Young Yi Cho's board. Yeah. And you hang around faith people. If you hang around negative people, you're going to go downhill. I don't care who you are. You know, and maybe your mate is negative. But, you know, get in some Bible studies that are positive. Get around faith teachers read books, feed your faith. That is key. Amen. That's what you have done. Yes. And you know, your, your daughter, Sarah, <laughs> she listened to you for a long time and her faith was building up and she encouraged you to go, I think it was Pakistan again. Yeah. Uh, I like that. That. She's very encouraging. I told her, you think I can do better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she'll text me and say, Mom, I'm praying for you today. You're going to have a home run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, your dad went through a really rough time. It was a hard time in your family because it just seemed to get worse and worse. And finally, your dad had to go into a mental institution. He did. But he got a miracle because a prophet spoke a word right, right to your mother. Right. So you need to... My what, mother what got there? spirit filled. We were Methodist, pretty liberal. My mother was very desperate for my father. She heard a spirit filled pastor on the radio, went to his church and got spirit filled. Mm and began to believe. They said my father had never come out of a mental hospital. She began to believe, and she took a prayer cloth, you know, Acts 19, 11, and 12, and pinned it to his pajamas. They said he'll never come out, and in a year he was out, delivered, born again, water baptized. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah. Praise That's God. That's our God. A there miracle. is nothing impossible nope. with God. And right. we, say, we say that glibly, but we really mean nothing, nothing, nada. There's nothing impossible with God. That's true. He'll do the impossible in your life. Amen. And I think something else my mother said to me, and this is important what we say to our children and our grandchildren. Yes. She said to me, you know, because I was afraid in school I wouldn't get good grades in spelling. And she would say, oh, you'll get A's. Well, how do you know? You're a smart baby. She said, you've always been a smart baby. And I grew up hearing, <laughs> you're a smart baby. And I want to say that to you. 
tell your grandchildren, tell your children, they're smart babies. What are you saying to them? You say, well, they don't act smart, but say it. That's a place of faith. Yeah. It's speaking to the mountain. If you don't speak to the mountain, you don't get what's on the other side. That's good. There's something good on the other side, and I bring that out in the book. Yes, you get what's on the other side. Amen. Amen. Well, um, what else do you have? <laughs> I wanted to um, talk about your enlarged heart and how God gave you a miracle. My enlarged heart. Oh. And God gave you a right. real miracle he did. for that. Would you share that? When I first got married, I had some heart problems. And they said, I went to a doctor. He said, you have an enlarged heart. You can never be active. Well, my husband and I, we've gotten into faith teaching and speaking the promises. And so I said, I believe God could give me a new heart. I think he has spare hearts in heaven. So... One night we went to a meeting and he, he was invited to sing. Now, we weren't in ministry yet, but we were in faith. And so in the time when he's singing, <laughs> I feel this warmth go over my heart. So I said to him in the car on the way home, I have a new heart. He said, really? I said, yeah, I have a new heart. So I went to a doctor for my checkup. I still, they always say, oh, you have such a wonderful heart. I'm 88 and a half. And they, and they still think say I have that? a dynamite heart. Wow. Because God has spare parts. Yeah. But you've got to feed your faith and not your doubts. Yeah. And what people say to you, well, you're just like your father. You know, he had a mental breakdown. You're just like your mother. She had cancer. Come yeah. on. But what did God say to you when you were dealing with those thoughts from the enemy? You're going to have a mental breakdown just like your father. You're going to have a mental breakdown just like your father. But your heavenly father said something to you. I loved what he said. He said, I never had a mental breakdown and you never will. I'm your father. <laughs> wow. And I think we pick up things. We're told we inherit these things. But we have a heavenly father. Yeah. Is he having a mental breakdown? No. And that, that is so encouraging. And that's why, and I teach you in the book, how to speak promises that go with problems. If you want the provision, you're going to have to speak the promise that goes with the problem. And I speak, I probably, probably speak 40 promises every morning with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I like coffee. Hmm. And she showed us these on her iPhone in the green room. <laughs> I just started scrolling and scrolling yeah. and scrolling. I said, you say this every morning? She said, every morning with coffee. Every morning. Coffee with, coffee with Jesus. Start my day <laughs> with the promise, it's and not, the promise takes care of the problem. And problems. it's not just <laughs> saying it, it's believing it exactly. when you say it. And the more you say it, the more your brain begins to believe it. Yeah. So yeah. I think, because I've said things, you know, that the devil said to me, it'll never happen. Who, yeah. who are you to think that's going to happen? Yeah. You know, but the more you say it, you think it is going to happen. It is yes. going to happen. Amen. And I think we need faith friends who speak faith with us. I'm sure there are things you're believing for, and you don't go to everybody to tell them. <laughs> no. You go to Jane, you go to people, and they will say, yes, it's going to happen. Yeah. So I think you really need faith friends. And I think yeah. this book is a faith friend. It's not over till you win. That's Amen. right, and it's not over till you win. That's right. Uh, it's a great book, and you yeah. need to get a copy of it. Uh, yes. <laughs> she is one of a kind. I <laughs> have never met anyone that I enjoy listening to. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. That when you speak, I just believe it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it happens. I think you're very prejudiced, but please stay that way. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Always stay that way. Well, it's the anointing. And the scripture says the anointing will break the yokes off. So Amen. we just believe that many of you listening to all of these miracles, the yokes have been broken off you, and uh, there's more to come. After this break, <laughs> Dave Boyer is going to sing 
another beautiful song. Stay with us. Your next text could save a life. Help CTN bring hope to the hurting, feed the hungry, and reach the lost. You can make a difference today. Text CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. That's CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. brother in Christ, Ralph Carmichael. What a blessing to be with these loved ones today. In my moments of fear, through every pain, every tear, there's a God who's so faithful to me. When my strength's been all gone When my heart lost its song Even then, He's been faithful to me Every word, every word God has promised is true Because what I thought was so impossible I've seen my God do He's been faithful He's been faithful to me Just looking back His love and mercy I see In my heart sometimes I question I've even failed to believe, but God's been faithful. Love one, he's been faithful to me. When my heart has looked away, the many times I couldn't pray, in his grace, he been faithful to me the days as a Christian I've spent so selfishly reaching out for what pleases me in his love he's been faithful to me and I love this lyric every time I come back to him I know he's waiting with his open arms that I see once again. God's been faithful. He's faithful to me. Just looking back, God's love and mercy I see. In my heart, you know, I question, I fail to believe, but God is faithful, faithful. Oh, in my heart, sometimes I question, I fail to believe, but He is faithful, faithful. In my heart, I have questioned, I failed to believe. But God is faithful, yes, He is, loved one. He's faithful to me. He'll always. 
always be. He loves us so, he'll never fail. God is faithful, he's faithful to me. Amen. That goes right along with this book and what oh, we're talking about. He is so faithful. He is. Faithful. He is. We wanted to talk uh, about uh, where you're going next. Uh, is there any places in this world that you put your mark on? You say, I'm going to go there, and you haven't been there yet? Yes. Where is that? I want to go to Bangladesh, and Stephen Kaiser is over there now oh. setting it up. I want to have healing meetings, and I also want to go to Saudi Arabia for a healing meeting, and there's an imam, not a Christian, an imam that is going to go and help Praise me God. with this meeting. Oh. So. You know, God just gives you favor. <laughs> I enjoy you're so you. You're blessing me. Oh, my <laughs> Thank golly. You. you bless me. Ooh, you're blessing me. <laughs> so I, I want to do that. Uh, those are kind of in the future. As I say, Stephen has been a great blessing to me, mm. you know, to go over. And some of these places like Sudan, you know, we've had meetings in Sudan. They threatened to kill him when he went over to set it up. So I told him to come home. I don't want you to be killed. <laughs> but he stayed and we got two meetings. Praise wow. God. Yeah. He's and your relative. And they threatened you too. Yes. You had a, somebody with a rifle outside your gun, uh, your door. Right. Somewhere. That was Pakistan. Pakistan. Where 127 men took an oath to kill me. Oh my Lord. And so they put a man with a gun outside my door where I slept. 24 And hours. I'm here. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, people, when you get born again, God has exciting things. But it's not all just a picnic, you know. It's yeah. standing in faith. It's not giving up. That's why I like yeah. the book. It's not over till you win. Persistent. There are things I'm believing for that haven't happened yet, uh -huh. but they're going to. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. My gracious. We're with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's so good to have Dave Boyer. Yes. Oh, Bob, oh. Jane, and Marilyn. I haven't seen Marilyn for years, but I know. boy, you're stronger than ever, sister. <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> that. God bless you. It's always such a joy to you. 40 years, Bob. Yeah. And we ce we celebrated our 40th anniversary. Yeah. Boy, really? that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I I'm, think I've been here God 25 of those. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yeah. God is faithful. That is. song. That's a great song, yes. A great song. And it's so true. It is, exactly. It's Never failed, Bob. Never failed. No. no. My folks prayed for me a lot of years yeah. when I was out without the Lord. And it reminds me of the faithfulness of God. Amen. What, what were some of the things you were into? Well, you know, I started so early as a teenager, like my late teens in Atlantic City, and they changed my name to Joey Stevens. And I started in the same club and put the, that Martin Lewis started, and the gentleman that owned the club put them together as a team. And then over the next 13 years, I served a different master than I do today. And uh, uh, I sold out to Satan's power uh, for self, you know, adulation and all the rest, and got into awful problems. And uh, by 1964, horribly alcoholic and uh, duly addicted to amphetamine. And uh, my wife had to leave me with our daughter for a while, but she's here tonight. Well, 60 praise. years we've been married. Yes, I was and my daughter just that. called me before I came on the set and our granddaughter and our new great granddaughter, Sophia yeah, Grace. Sweet. I'm such a blessed man. <laughs> and I, this past weekend I sang in a church with a 17 piece swinging band and boy, we had a hoot. Huh? <laughs> I always say, I'm going to take a band to heaven, you know, <laughs> but whatever, so I'm, I'm just blessed, Bob, and being with you folks, and well, it's always a joy to be here. Well, you, I was going to say, June has stuck with you Jane, through thick and thin, she, through all of that. Yeah, and she never stopped believing or praying for me. She's been so faithful to me, and she is, she is touched by Marilyn, too, and June has that spirit of grace 
and faithfulness that I admire. I mean, she, she doesn't want to be around negativity, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, who does? She, she's a positive confession of faith, you know. Yeah. That's so. why you're still out there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Still saying for the Lord. Yes, amen. So blessed. Well, we've been privileged to have Marilyn with us, and we want to take this last few minutes and have you lead our people to the Lord. If you want healing, this is your day. Thank you. This is your day for healing. And if you want salvation, this is your day. Yes. Lead us in prayer. I'm going to send the word to those of you who have sicknesses and disease. And don't tell me your age. Just receive what he has for you. So put your hand on your body. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word to everyone who has their hand on their body for healing and wholeness. Not just healing, wholeness. And you're creating new beginnings for them. And you're taking over depression and filling them yes. with joy. Now, people say, how did you get into this? Well, I started reading the Bible, but then I got the author in my heart. So when I was 16, I got born again. Born again, what is that? I invited Jesus to come into my heart, be Lord of my life, repentant of my sins. So I want you to pray with me. Say, Father, I know you have a plan for me. I'm not an accident. I am a divine appointment, and I thank you that Jesus, you sent Jesus to die for my sins and he arose from the dead. Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Some of Amen. you are starting out a new life mm -hmm. from That's this right. moment forward. Some of you have received your healing, and we'd love to hear about it. Whatever yes. God's done in your life, we'd love to hear. And we want to thank our guests for being yes. with us today. And what God a bless blessing you. they are. Oh, here's a blessing. Blessings. God bless you.